Whether it's an impulse buy, a change in opinion, or a poor quality final product, it's probably not too uncommon to have something you don't absolutely love in your collection. And with one as big as mine, yeah, I have a lot. Here's five figures that I regret buying. So I'll begin with a story. During my first trip to Japan back in 2018, I was completely overwhelmed with the sheer variety and availability of anime figures. I knew I had to get something, but my grails were either too expensive, too big to carry home, or nowhere to be found. So I found myself looking at a lot of prize figures. They're hard to miss given how many arcades we went to, but sinking a bunch of money into a claw machine just isn't my jam. There are a ton of stores, especially around otaku hubs like Akihabara and Denden Town, that just straight up sell prize figures new in box. But I held strong and passed on them. That is until I came across a small store in Nakano that had a bunch of loose figures, with junk written in English on the bag. In a momentary lapse of judgement, I thought, hey, these look pretty good. Normal figures are about this size, right? And so I bought the junk figure. It was Bam Presto's 17 year old kiss shot. Ironically enough, this has to be the figure that's travelled with me the most, from Tokyo to Hiroshima and back to Australia. And now I'm just completely throwing her under the bus. At the time, I didn't realise the quality nor the size was anywhere close to what I thought it was. When I got back home and put it next to some of my premium figures, it just wasn't even comparable. She's really quite small, like comically small, compared to every scale figure I own. I will say that compared to other prize figures, she's probably around average or even slightly better. But looking at her, or rather hiding her behind figures I actually like for the past couple of years, I realise that she's not something that I've ever wanted to have in my collection, except for that one moment when I bought her. And ever since then, I've never been able to live down buying a junk figure. The next two share some themes. The first is Good Smile's 1-8 scale Crystal Knight Party version of Shibuya Rin from Idolmaster Cinderella Girls. I was eyeing off the whole trio of figures because I like their outfits and they look pretty cute, but the catch is I have no idea who any of these girls are. I've never watched anything Idolmaster related and I couldn't tell you a single thing about Shibuya Rin. And yet here I am owning a scale figure of her. I have a policy of never buying a figure of a character I don't know and or don't enjoy, and I've also broken this policy too many times, so I think I might just be pretty weak. Rin was on sale and I thought, heck, why not? I've been eyeing off this set of figures for a while and she's my favourite. I thought it was a good deal for around 20% off. Turns out nobody wanted her and I've seen the price tank as far as 65% off over the years. So even if I tried to sell her off, I'd be losing a lot anyway. As for the figure itself, I think she's cute and the detailing looks pretty good to me, and it's about what I would expect from GSC. I can only assume these didn't sell because of the characters, since from a quality and a visual standpoint, I think she's pretty great. I just have no connection to the character at all, and she's just taking up space at this point. So again, we have an idol figure that's completely tanked in value, but at least this time, I know the character. This is Stronger's 1 8 scale Kosaka Honoka from Love Live. She's taken an even harder hit than Ren, as you can now find her for around a quarter of her original cost. Don't get me wrong, market value isn't a super huge factor for me, but it does hurt a bit when I have something I want to sell, but it isn't worth the effort. Honoka was supposed to be a limited figure, but there's so many of them floating around on the market. From my point of view, there are so many Love Life figures and not enough buyers that actually want to keep them. I even ended up buying Alters 1-7 Honoka scale after this, which is better in pretty much every way, from having a more fitting outfit, a more interesting pose, better detail, and being physically bigger. Unfortunately, this figure is completely outclassed, and she's another regret buy when I should have just waited for the scale I actually wanted. On the bright side, I guess her build quality seems okay. I accidentally dropped her while I was trying to record this footage, and I don't see any damage. A few years ago, I went through the entire list of Nendoroids that existed up until that point, and made an awfully long wish list. One of my first purchases towards making that wishlist a reality was number 124, Haruhi Suzumiya from the Disappearance movie, who also happened to be the oldest Nendo on the list. 
I knew early dendroids looked pretty awful, but after 100 they seemed to have that style figured out, so I assumed it would be all good. Big nope on that one. After receiving her I quickly learned that these early nendos use a different style of base that is super fiddly and really restricts leg movement for posing options. On top of posing being really lackluster, she only came with one accessory and it wasn't that great. I took it as a lesson learned, but I was never really satisfied with my purchase, especially compared to the promo pitches that really sold me on her in the first place. To add insult to injury, right after I finished filming this, her head snapped off. I kind of don't even want to fix her at this point because the plastic has a strong smell and feels kind of weird. The final figure in this video is something that's genuinely good. It's Stronger's 1-7 scale London Travel Sabre. This is a really nice figure that I would absolutely give a glowing review to. The thing is, I only bought her because she was a limited Aniplex Plus exclusive, and I was afraid of missing out. Turns out, I would have been fine with missing out. My biggest gripe with it is that its body shape and facial expression is nearly identical to Stronger's very own Type Moon Racing Saber, which I already own and prefer. To be glass half full about it, you could say that I love the figure so much that I just had to have two of them, but really I should be controlling spending on this sort of stuff. I have way too many Saber figures compared to how much I actually like her as a character, and this figure would be an easy drop from my collection. The biggest lesson to learn is just making sure I stop myself before I impulse buy something, because FOMO hits me hard. So that does it for 5 anime figures I regret buying. By all means, I still think these figures look pretty good, and I don't want to deter you from buying one if you really like the look of them. Personally I feel like I've never bought anything that actively looks bad, I'm just not happy with these purchases now because they take up space that I could be using for figures that I actually want to display. Let me know in the comments if you've ever regretted buying an anime figure, and if you're interested in seeing more of this type of content. I hope you enjoyed the video, this has been the Ando Experience, and I'll catch you again in the next one. Bye!